Let's introduce you to Mom's Pride. It's a 1986 Monte Carlo that's been in the same family since it was new. The son has updated the drivetrain, and because of that, it needs some fabrication help to get a few of the custom pieces to fit. The girls bust out the welder, and when this car is finished, it's not going to sound like your average money. What's up, everybody? Welcome to All Girls Garage. Today in the shop, we have kind of a fun and really sweet project. This car belonged to our owner's mother. She actually bought it new, and it was her pride and joy. Now it belongs to the son, and he wants to carry on the tradition of taking really good care of it and make Mama proud. So he's been doing some really fun stuff to it. Absolutely. Heck yeah. What a better way to make Mama proud than... Uh... <laughs> You know, upgrade the drivetrain with something pretty sweet. So oh. <laughs> He actually sourced a wrecked 2013 Chevy Camaro and uh, harvested the sweet supercharged LS8 <laughs> and made it to a six-speed manual transmission. I mean, ah. This is what I would do to make my mom proud, just saying. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, sitting in an 86 Monte Carlo SS, this is a really cool combination, and it's going to be a ton of fun. But like many projects, it got kind of stalled. He had some challenges he ran into, and that's where we come into play. Absolutely, right. Because, like, not all of us are good at everything. I mean, don't ask me to rebuild an automatic transmission. I'd tell you, go home. <laughs> um, so in this case, he ran into some eh, road bumps, exhaust when you've got an engine that's different from the vehicle what like do you order it for the engine or do you order it for the vehicle or do you have to make your own modify In this case, we're gonna make our own i know all of that stuff is very important however none of it matters unless we can get this engine running right and one of the big issues he ran into with that was overheating because he wasn't able to harvest the cooling fans from the zl1 which is kind of important because his engines run a little bit warm there's a ton of power in there so, wasn't able to get it to stay cool. So, we're going to try to tackle that for him so he can drive it right. with that lovely interior. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We've got a lot of customizing to do. Uh, looks like, I, I think the hard work is out of the way, thanks to him. So, yes. we just got to, you know, pick up some of the pieces. No yeah. big deal. So. Absolutely. Let's dig into the cooling system first, shall Probably we? Probably a good idea. Yeah, All do we right. have parts in the trunk? I think so. All right, so as Bogey mentioned, one of the most important items on our to-do list that we're going to tackle today is the cooling issue on this beast. So... We figured a good place to start. <laughs> Upgraded radiator and fan combo from Original Parts Group. Yeah, so we've got two 12-inch fans, which welded radiator, which not only looks really pretty, but it's actually oversized. It's got one and a quarter inch cores within it, and that's going to increase cooling capacity up to 20%. Yeah. So if this all doesn't handle the overheating issue, then we probably have something else. Something else going on. on. Yeah. I mean, since everything here is going to be pretty custom, I'm not sure which is going to be best, whether we're going to be able to slide these two in as a unit or one first, then the other. So you make a fair point. Maybe we take out the old one and then like assess. Make a point. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I'll get a drain bucket. You think this is part of his problem? Uh, a little bit of a kink there, huh? Yeah, I that's think gonna, that's gonna sure. really help with flow, don't you think? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it just did not want to break free. I have understood. Let go. Okay. Look at that. Easy breezy. All right. So we do this. Well, careful, careful, careful. So we test fit it. And it fit great. Lo and behold, I mean, who would have expected with that massive <laughs> amount of room there? But you never know when you're working with custom stuff. So now we're ready to put these two together. Yeah. yeah. The final install. Now you have a couple of options when you're installing these two parts together. You can rivet it or you can use some self-tapping screws. I'm kind of of the mindset that you always want to give yourself options, be able to remove it, and rivets. You wind up having to drill things, and it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. So. Yep. We're gonna do self-tapping, and then we can always take them out if they need to be taken out at some point. Absolutely. Watch that air intake. Yeah, you want to drop your side first. I got a little more room over here. So. Oh, yeah, you're a little <laughs> tight, aren't you? Don't want to scratch it. Nice. Hey, look at that beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to lift mine up and actually move my little squishy slightly over because there's a lip there. Now, what about? How close are we now? Bueno. That looks great. All right, we have plenty of room for the radiator, but yeah, not so much for this cover. When it's situated the way it needs to be situated, uh, it no fit. Right. <laughs> so. And we use this cover still. I mean, first of yeah. all, because you want to use anything that we can do to get the air piping right through this section. Heck yes. Um, yeah. But also, like, I mean, it's pretty. <laughs> We'd like to keep using well, it. Well, it matches the theme of what 
he's got going on here. So yep. basically what we determined is that there are some little tabs. Here, let me show you. Yeah. These guys right here are hidden against the radiator so you can see the marks where it's hitting. Yeah. So I'm just gonna slice those off. And, and that should fix the problem. I think so. Trimmed enough off. Look at that. And there we go. All right, beautiful. Now that we've installed our electric fans and our upgraded radiator, it's time to wire in the fans. Now we also got this universal wiring kit from OPGI, and it comes with this relay as well as this universal sensor, which can pretty much go on because our engine is so new, it already has like the perfect coolant temperature sensor on there. So instead of running this wire, oops, I think this trigger wire and on the relay, yeah. Instead of running this to our universal sensor, I'm just gonna run this wiring harness and tap into the factory sensor that's already on the engine. And uh, we should be able to program it from there. So that's pretty nice. And also from OPGI, actually this, is, this whole thing was part of the same kit. Look at this really nice harness that's gonna go to each one of our fans. So pretty stoked to install this. So I'm gonna get to work. Faye will get the radiator wired up and help this engine not overheat again. And after the break, the girls unbox the three inch aftermarket exhaust show how they'll adapt it to the new engine. There is a ton of functionality built into this Lincoln Electric Power MIG 260. The first thing you'll notice is this beautiful 7-inch color display. The ready, set, weld function automatically sets up the machine for you after you tell it what thickness and what wire diameter you're working with. These automatic controls will really take the guesswork out of welding and make setup and operations so simple. It also has Arc FX technology that shows you how your settings are affecting the bead profile right on the screen. This machine can do multiple welding processes from push pull, MIG, and even spool gun applications. And with the memory saving capability, you can program in your favorite welding process. So next time, you can just turn it on and go. still working on our Monte Carlo mom's pride with our lovely LSA engine in here. We got our radiator in, our fans in. Faye is working on getting some of the wiring taken care of. I upgraded to some fancier bolts on this cover because I wasn't liking the way it was looking. Ooh, so, like you know, we're making some progress here. Mm -hmm. But one area where we've got a little bit of issue, also an electrical kind of scenario of, of a different sort, is back here our two rear coils can't sit where they're supposed to because they are running into our HVAC box, mm -hmm. our evaporator box and, and heater valve and all that other good stuff. So they're sitting a little bit cocked, which means they're not secured properly and we can't get them in the right position. So they make some relocation kits for these things, but it's a little bit challenging because we don't have a lot of room to play with. This is a big engine crammed into a relatively tight space. So what I'm going to do is create a special bracket that is actually going to sit over two of the bolts that would originally hold the coils and allow it to be shifted, both of those coils to be shifted kind of on a diagonal, allowing them to be secured properly, properly. So that should take care of the issue. So are we just like continuing on this major theme of like function and form? I this do is just like the all girls that garage theme. thing. Yes. Oh, Welcome to all girls garage, <laughs> the home of function and form. <laughs> I like to be pretty and functional at the same time. This is what a concept. That, yeah. That's mucho better, May I present to you a finished bracket? <laughs> so this is relatively simple, super straightforward, easy to make. So this guy is gonna live right about there and it is going to allow both of our end coils to be able to be bolted down. They'll just sit a little bit cockeyed. That'll allow our spark plug wires or coil wires to connect without interfering with this EVAP box, heater core box. This should resolve this problem. So I've notched out the coils on 
the one back one so that I can actually kind of swivel them into place rather than having to wrestle with it back there and needing extra hands. All right, let's see if I got that right. You go there. All right. One bolt there. And, ha ha, ladies and gentlemen, we have success. All right, tighten these down, we're good to go. You know, so often we see a beautiful car outside and then we get it up in the air and we're like, eh. <laughs> this is not that scenario. We got this up in the air for the first time just now and we are both geeking out. It is so beautiful, so well done. Every detail. Oh, yeah. So many upgrades. Money was <laughs> spent. It was like, if something was going to be upgraded, it was upgraded to the fullest, the extreme. And this is yeah. not at all to like dog on other people's projects because a lot of times, you know, people don't do their own work and they bring it to us because they need us to finish with totally. someone else messed up um, or just don't have the skills to do it themselves. This is awesome. This, <laughs> this was all planned. Um, so, of course, once again, like, that puts the burden on us to make sure that, like, we hold ourselves to this standard, which is, like, I mean, a blessing. We don't get this a lot. Yeah. And, and one of the many upgrades that this owner has done um, is these beautiful headers. They are gorgeous. They are huge. Yep. And uh, sound nasty <laughs> in a very good way. Yep. When it's done. <laughs> so. Totally. So, okay. Our owner had two things on his wish list for this exhaust. One. Must be stainless steel. I, I get that. Two. And two must be three inches. Ta da! We oh, chose this one. Do. Yes. Um, from OPGI. This is uh, a Pro exhaust system. Yeah, and this is pretty this is pretty cool. So obviously it is stainless, obviously it's three inch, that's easy. Um, but one of the things that's really nice about it is that beautiful, sexy X pipe up there. And that's not just a beautiful thing, that's actually one of the things we love, form and function. Um, because having that X pipe is actually going to increase or improve the scavenge effect, which of course is gonna help the engine run better, give us a little bit more horsepower, and it it sounds extra nice. Right, and that's also gonna help like balance the exhaust pulses from each of the banks and then end up giving us a much smoother exhaust note. And it's gonna be still, you know, a perfectly fine daily driver. It's not gonna like make everyone in the car deaf. No. And it's gonna make mom proud. Heck yeah! <laughs> so we start mocking it up maybe from the backboard? Yeah, that works cool. for me. Alright. The girls have the exhaust laid out, but now they have to figure out how it's going to fit in the car. Even though it's made for the Monte Carlo body style, the only has put a lot of roadblocks in the way, but it's nothing Bogey and Faye can't handle. When your AC stops working, many times you can have a leak in the system that is causing your refrigerant to get low. Even if you add more refrigerant, you're not necessarily fixing the problem. That's why we always reach for AC Avalanche when fixing our AC issues. Their one-of-a-kind recharge kit stops common leaks and O-rings and other rubber components most of the common leaks can begin. AC Avalanche is safe, accurate, and easy. All you need to do is turn and push the recharge hose onto the low side port. And the can includes both a traditional pressure gauge and smart clip technology to measure interior air temperature with their R134A AC recharge kit. Smart clips will let you know when to stop charging by changing color based on the temperature at the air vents. The first clip will turn blue once you start adding refrigerant. And the second clip will turn green when the correct fill is reached. AC Avalanche is safe for all vehicle AC systems, including hybrid and electric cars. This all-girls garage tech tip is brought to you by AC Avalanche, the smart way to recharge. Welcome back to All Girls Garage. Boogie and I were attempting to mock up this exhaust so we can figure out where we need to put our aftermarket hanger the hangers that are going to actually come with this exhaust system, or that did come with this exhaust system, uh, because as you can see, and uh, clearly they have not aged as well as I have, so we're going to be replacing those because they don't really fit with the theme of this car. However, what we notice is that because the owner lowered the vehicle, I actually cannot get this up over the rear end here and into position, so Bogey and I are going to have to drop this rear axle down and actually get the pipes in there so we can start a little bit more of an official mock-up. So. 
going. Nothing to it. Okay. Oh, yep. Got it. Beautiful. Yep. Nice. Nice. Perfect. There we go. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. We got some issues here. Yep. For <laughs> sure. Did even go on there? Yeah. I mean, not really with the way that it's angled right now. So we're yeah. going to have to figure that one out for sure. So clearly that is not <laughs> in its final resting place. But yep, this is all part of mock-up. So we've got one half of our OPGI exhaust in place <laughs> Not really, but, but what's really cool is that the way that we had it originally laid out on the floor didn't really work out that way, but we were able to rearrange all the components. So the front part of the exhaust yeah. actually is fitting quite nicely. We've got these straight pipes here going through our cross member, aftermarket cross member. Yes, very and nice. And like perfect fitment to the back of yeah. our headers. So we got, we got some good news. Part of it's working out real well. Mm -hmm. It's from here back. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> The good thing is, though, is that we're going to be able to... With some minor modifications. Yeah, cut this and make this work. So, definitely have to do some fabrication here. Yeah. Not too bad, though. This part's the easy part. Mm hmm We have a bigger issue. Eh. Because back here, where our mufflers live, the, the owner has done a ton of reinforcements on this vehicle, making it a lot sadder, a lot stronger. Well, one of those reinforcements is this really beautiful bracket that is basically a reinforcement for the control arm mount, the lower control arm. Is happening is that's interfering with where this muffler has to sit in order for the muffler to be down low enough to clear that bracket the exhaust is gonna hit the rear bumper that's no good it can't go up higher because the brackets there so we're thinking we may wind up having to do some funky tilting of this it's not really ideal but it's doable where we can sit the muffler kind of at a little bit of an angle and then hopefully be able to clear the floor exactly. as well so, yeah. with this piece and so like, the owner issues. lowered the vehicle quite a bit, so we're sort of working with that. And then also, yeah. like, everything tends to be taking up a little bit more space because we beefed everything up. So, limited space. Yeah. From all angles. Which is, of course, this is why the owner had us take care of this, because it does require some modifications and some fabrication. But nothing we can't handle. We just got to, you know, wrap our brains around a little bit, see what things we have to cut and yeah. what things we got to weld. You know, when we first started talking about the exhaust on this Monte Carlo, we said that the customer had a couple of requests, and that was that it be three inches all the way back and that it be stainless steel. Well, he had one additional request, and this was kind of an unusual one because we're used to having the opposite request. Oh, totally. I tuned it out a little bit. I'm like, what Right? Now? Yeah. No, he wanted us to add catalytic converters, which I think is very respectful responsible of him. He likes all the power and he also wants to protect the environment. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. He's just making up for my personal choices. And these are going to live right here. So as part of our mock-up, we sort of like accidentally put in this small pipe right as a placeholder for where these are going to be when we do our final weld up, clamp up, and install. Who so. says that was accidental? <laughs> all right. Well, I didn't realize that brain over here is uh, figuring How, this all out for However, me. <laughs> we will need to do some modification because obviously this is not a long enough flame for us to put any sort of clamp on. So we're going to be flanging it and replacing this pipe entirely with this nifty little deal. Heck yeah! So the cutting and welding is not done on the exhaust yet. After the break, Bogey welds on a flange piece for the new cats. And the girls get to hear this supercharged engine fire up. All right, let's start with this number. 85,000 of warranty coverage. Are you kidding me? But that's what you get with the Hercules Tires Road Tour 855 SPE. This premium all-season touring tire delivers crisp handling and a quiet ride, all at an exceptional value. And not only do the customer reviews for the Hercules Road Tour 855 illustrate their exceptional performance in braking and handling, but they also hold up in both wet and dry conditions. So whether you have a sedan, a crossover, or a minivan, give these a try with the 45-day trial that's part of the Hercules Tires Promise. Pretty straightforward getting this cat welded in. We were able to take that straight pipe and basically just cut a chunk of it out. We're going to weld the cat to either end of that pipe and then be able to utilize the same clamps that we were utilizing that same fitting. It's just the minimal amount of work needed to get this job done in a good way. So I'm just going to tack it into place in a couple of key spots here, then we'll 
back off, get it fully tigged up, nice and beautiful. But for now, just a couple of spots to keep it held. That's better. We got all of our engine wish list items and our exhaust wish list items taken care of. We were getting ready to turn our attention into this car. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. How tall is the owner of this car again? He's close to six feet. Yeah. At five four, I can like almost touch my nose with the headliner. <laughs> and these are fully adjustable seats. They're mm -hmm. nice seats. I mean, I understand totally. why he likes to use these. But the problem with fully adjustable seats is that underneath the seat in the bracket, like there's a whole bunch of motors and like controls and electronics down there. So it's not like we can just chop, sit, like. We'll be losing the features, so I think we're going to have to get with him and we're going to have to nix that. But the good news is, is that this interior is kind of dope. It's really <laughs> in great shape. I mean, come on. This is kind of awesome. And he's got this awesome instrument cluster, very cool display, radio setup, infotainment system. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is pretty cool. And with all that we've done with getting this engine running, getting that exhaust dialed in and sounding sweet. Right. After what we've done today, he'll be able to go out and drive the car. So seats are kind of an afterthought, and after driving it, like, maybe he'll just fall in love with this? Or maybe. I so. We'll make it a good choice, and we'll come back. <laughs> but, Hoping. you know who is definitely coming back? Uh, us, because we've got a lot to finish up. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>